this week's episode of the Trophy Achievement Podcast for Friday, October 18th, 2019. We have news on the new skins for Fortnite Chapter 2. We also have news on Pokemon Sword and Shield and the return of Fat Pikachu from the very start of the TV show. PlayStation 5 is going to have PlayStation Now supported on it. We also have someone who spent $220,000 in microtransactions on a Transformers game. All this... Nandy! Yeah, all this including we have got a Final Cut mode for the Genesis version of Aladdin. Now, whether that's going to be coming to Xbox and PlayStation, that remains to be seen. Yes. Yes, it is. We will go into that as well. There's a Final Cut mode coming for the game. We also have more news. Um, after... We also have more news on the PlayStation 5. And the controller patent suggests it will pivot cloud gaming in a big way. All this, plus the trophies for the Medieval Remaster, and my latest rental from Boomerang Rentals, right here on the Trophy Achievement Podcast. Roll, the, roll that intro. If you're looking for a place to go and find some trophies, this is the place to be in the charge of your feet. If you're on Xbox and need some game to score, come over here, I'll help you get some more. My name is Gen Z Retro, the host of the show, gaming news and reviews and all you need to know. Because the weekend is finally here at last, sit back, relax, enjoy the Trophy Achievement Podcast. Hello my fellow Latter-day Saints, Gen Z Retro here, and welcome to episode 11 of season 2. Of the Trophy Achievement Podcast, your one-stop shop for all the latest gaming news and rumours. And of course, those sweet points and trophies at the end of the show. And if you're feeling lucky, some unpackaging from Boomerang Rentals. So let's get this out of the way first, shall we? So we're going to get we're gonna get started. As always, big shout out to Boomerang Rentals for, um, for this. Um, packages start from as little as $3.99 a month. Sign up today, get a 21-day free trial, you get three free game rentals. There are no late fees. Keep the game as long as you like, or keep it forever at a discounted price from the online store. You can play the latest games, including getting the Medieval Remaster from as little as $9.99 a month. Once you start renting, you're going to start saving. Boomerangrentals.co.uk, the best place to rent your games. So let's have a look and see what they have dispatched me. Ha <laughs> ha, yes! And I was talking about latest releases. I've only got the new grid game. Ha ha ha! Nice! Fantastic! I love my racing games. Codemarkers have been very busy this year because they had F1 2019 earlier this year. Speaking of which. Yes. Guess, guess what? Had Game Pass for PC. F1 2018? Excellent. Like the time. I've, already, I've already got, because uh, 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 I don't really need F1 2018 anymore because I managed to get. F1 2019? The ever so famous 1000 Gamer Score on it. Stop being a show off. <laughs> Hey, look, guys, since 2015, I've managed to get at least one game with either 1,000 gamer score, the elusive platinum trophy, but this year, I've managed to do both. So, anyway, no gaming screw up this week, unfortunately. But nevertheless, let's get started. And uh, who remembers playing Aladdin on either the Super Nintendo or the Genesis? Mega Drive over here in the UK. Not me. Well, we are pleased to inform you that we have got some news regarding the Genesis version of Aladdin. So, when Disney Classic Games Aladdin and the Lion King was announced, the list of games included something called Disney's Aladdin Final Cut. 
We knew the Final Cut was a reworking of the classic Sega Genesis game, but until now, we didn't know the extent of the changes. This is from IGN. In short, Disney's Aladdin Final Cut include new areas, boss patterns, graphical, eff graphical effects, uh, in brackets, check out the cool sword strike flashes in the video every time you clash with an enemy. Okay. And other changes that were made after consulting the original 1990s development team. Now that's dedication for you. Mm -hmm. Apparently, The Lion King is also getting a remastered treatment as well. Yeah. Those blooming monkey swinging sections, though. Yeah, yeah, like I said, those blooming monkey swinging sections. The frustration they caused so many children back in the 90s. Thankfully, I didn't have to go through that. But anyway. Seriously, you've not played Mega Man yet. Oh, I've, pl oh, I've played Mega Man and Mega Man 2. Can't even get, can't even get to the first boss. <laughs> anyway, the idea wasn't to completely remake Genesis' version of Aladdin. Have you tried Dark Souls? Oh, I've tried. Yeah. I had to I had to get help getting past the Taurus demon. That's only the second boss in the game. <laughs> I know. I know. Anyway. To be honest with you, I needed help defeating the asylum demon. That's the first boss! <laughs> I know. Anyway. The idea wasn't to completely remake the Genesis version of Aladdin. Instead, Digital Eclipse senior producer Stephen Frost tells IGN, "We wanted to only touch things that were truly f that we truly felt would improve the overall experience, and only make changes that the original team might have considered making if they had more time." One example, and it turns out there's a secret area. So there's a there's a secret area where there's a doorway that appears in the final cut and it's not in the original. What what is it called? The Will Smith stage. Ooh, that's a bit of a that's a that's a bit of a cheap shot. <laughs> I don't care what you say. Will Smith does not belong. As the genie. <laughs> James, credit where he's due, he actually did really well as the genie. Of course you're not going to touch the great Robin Williams. You're not even going to come close to that. But Will Smith did well with what he had. Okay. But anyway, this is definitely something I'm going to check out. Might or might not have it in my in my throwback Thursdays, which I really need to get back and up and running. Relax, folks. Don't worry, Throwback Thursdays will be back 2020. Mark my words on that one. Yeah, seriously, what are you going to do? Spider-Man for the PS1? No! I might do Spider-Man 2, though. <laughs> I might do Spider-Man 2, though. Quit slacking, boy! Ugh, Venom. Venom. Maybe I should have hey, just... Hey, want to race? <laughs> Maybe I should have put it on kid mode. <laughs> I need to put this bomb in a safe place. I actually, com I actually, Come on, I actually got through both games on kid mode. And uh, oh. and, and uh, oh. also, also earlier this week, folks, uh, I managed to get back up and running with uh, Spider-Man: New Game Plus uh, as I continue my hunt for my now eighth platinum trophy. I might get it by the end of the year. I might not. I don't know. But anyway, you know what? We've got a couple of articles regarding the PlayStation 5. Right. What, are you, you. what are you suggesting? What are you suggesting? You know what? This is going to end well. You know what? If you can get your platinum trophy by the end of the year, it's pizza time. What? What? I was saying, if you get your platinum trophy by the end of the year, it's pizza time.
<laughs> James, next time you're at arcade, tell me when you're going because I want to. I want to get. I want to do that pizza mini game from Spider-Man Two. Oh, oh, oh! <coughs> I normally go there on a Friday. Why? Well, like I said, I want to try. I want to try that mini. I want to try that pizza game. <laughs> Someone actually gifted that one particular point where Peter actually says pizza time in Spider-Man 2 and it's now a meme! What were the odds? Oh, flipping hamburgers, where's the lid? I can see you. There we go. I've got that top of my head now! <laughs> well, you know what they say, karma's a... Okay, sorry about that, folks. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> talking of PlayStation, we've got some new details regarding the PlayStation 5, which is coming out holiday 2020, folks, so make sure you start saving up. And the great news the is, of me. the great news is, James, I can play my PS4 games on the PS5. Through what? Backwards compatibility. You know they have confirmed that the PS5 is going to have backwards compatibility with the PS4 library. You know what? If you can play Vice City on a PS5, then I'll be impressed. They'll probably have that. They'll probably have. They'll probably implement the PS2 classics at some point. But when are they going to implement the PS1 classics, though? Exactly. That's what I want to know. I want my PS1 classics. I want Pac-Man World. Yes, he wants Spider-Man. So, so no! <laughs> you <laughs> evil! You are never going to hear the end of this. Oh! Until you complete the game. I've done that. I've completed Spider-Man. Do I have to do... Do I have to complete it on a difficulty that isn't kid mode? Yes. <laughs> ah! I've got to do it! I've got to go through the Venom race! <laughs> anyway. You know what, Fraser? If you can beat that game on your throwback first days... I really hope I can at this point. <laughs> Before... Hmm, before the pro- I'm trying to think. Before New Year's Day. Oh, good luck with that. <laughs> that ain't happening anytime soon. I will honestly well pay for the 30 minutes so you can try the Pizza Time minigame on Spider-Man 2. I will actually take you, physically take you to Arcade. Well, failing that, I would have to. Failing that, I would have to pay for it myself. Yep. <laughs> that's, that's not a major issue. How much is it for thirty minutes? About two, three quid. <laughs> chump change. That's chump change to me. That's basically. That's basically lunch. Anyway. Me. New PlayStation 5 controller patent suggests PS5 will pivot to cloud gaming in a big way. Now, what could this possibly mean? This article's on Games Radar. <laughs> so let's have a look and see what we have. Just last week, Sony announced the PS5's official name and release date, but stopped short of offering details about the console's new controller. Aside from the fact it will incorporate cutting-edge haptic te technology, whatever that means, a new patent discovered by German website Tectastic, however, suggests the DualShock 5, or whatever it ends up being called, it'll probably end up being DualShock 5, uh -huh. could signify a huge shift to cloud gaming for PS4's upcoming successor. 
We've been looking for a controller that connects directly over the internet and not to the PS5 itself. James, can you stop moving the table? Sorry. Revealing a controller that connects directly over the internet and not to the PS5 itself. What about those that don't have an internet connection? Well, mind you, everything needs an internet connection these days. Uh, what about people in I and and only communities? What about people in countryside communities? He said it, not me. So, so I would say cloud gaming could be a good thing. I mean, but there are some cons to it as well. I, I would say more cons than pros. Yeah, and he's just li he's just listed a couple of them right out of the gate. Um, for example, but then again, what if and what if what if. Um, what if, you, what if, I um, wonder if your situation would have been a bit like Fraser's, no offence, with, uh, with being not exactly reliable internet connection. Well, that was my problem about a year and a half ago, when uh, I found that, yes, my internet was good for downloading stuff, but for streaming and uploading, it took Hours for me to get my podcast up every week. I know. So I decided to upgrade. And I've got fastest package they have. Mm -hmm. Anyway. The patent filled up a few weeks ago by Sony through World Intellectual Property Organization describes a controller device for user interactivity with a server of a cloud gaming system is provided. Please. I can do that with my smartphone now. Oh yeah. I can play my PS4 games on this through PS4 Remote Play. All I need to do is get my PS4 started up, connect my controller, connect my controller to this, and there we go. If I can work out how to do that, though. Mm. I'm sure I'll figure something out. I always manage to, anyway. Um, accompanied by a sketch showing the user connecting their controls to the console remotely through an online server. The controller device communicates directly to an access device for connection to a network that connects to the controller device to the server without connecting to the... Ah! My brain hurts! I know. Yes. Connector, controller, connector, connecting to the, the, the... Wherein the server receives the processes, the input... Which, ah, ah, I'm stumbling across my own words! Wherein the server receives and processes the inputs to render gameplay video that is transmitted over the network for the rendering to a display device that is local to the controller device. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> this sounds so confusing! This sounds so confusing! <laughs> How did that end up becoming a meme in 2019? <laughs> Seriously, how did that become a meme in 2019? Uh, Parker hates it when I get the drop on him. I hate when he puts the drop on me. <laughs> that one's that is in Spider Man 2, right? Nope, Spider Man 1, the Venom Race. Son of a. Ah! Now, there's every ch chance that this patent pertains not to PS5 but to a separate controller for PlayStation streaming service, PS Now, which recently got revamped with a new price structure and library of games. It might have nothing to do with PlayStation at all, too. It, and it's also possible that Sony is no longer working on this project. Anyway, since patent filings are no means a confirmation of an approved product. 
Still, we have to wonder what PlayStation has in store for cloud gaming with the next generation, especially as Microsoft has confirmed a pivot to the technology for the Xbox Project Scarlet and Google Stadia has just announced Stadia. its... Stadia. Stadia, Stadia, tomato, tomato, six and a half dozen, it's all the same to me! Has just announced its release date for this November. Watch this space, but there... But there's now a likelihood that next year's PS5 controller can sync up your games without even having to connect to the system itself. Which would be where the remote play comes in. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. Very alarming. They're trying to they're trying to put uh, game streaming as the future. I don't think that's going to be happening. Maybe subscription based gaming. But... Which, which is why we've got PlayStation Now, we've got Xbox Game Pass. Do you think Nintendo will end up doing something similar at some point? No. Well, aren't you? In a way, they do, technically. Because if you've got Nintendo Switch Online, you can access a library of their classic NES and Super Nintendo games. May I explain how? Emulation. How ironic. Nintendo's so against emulation, and yet they still use emulation to uh, resell their own games. Well, not necessarily sell their own games per se. But allow you to play the games through allow you to play the games through emulation and all you have to pay is their uh, online subscription fee. Which is only like what, three fifty a month? Mm-hmm. Or even better, eighteen quid for a whole year. Mm-hmm. Sure. Or can you play Goldeneye on your switch? Licensing issues. Exactly. But anyway, and apart from that, they don't have an N64 emulation on it yet. They do. What they do? When? Since when? Let me get my Switch, folks. Let me double check this. Four games on Switch. Yes, I've got my switch up and running, folks. Content for members only. It's only showing up with Super Nintendo and ah. NES. So, like I said, Nintendo. Ah, of course, yes. Oh, hello, Super Kirby Clash. Kirby. Let me have this one, folks. I'm a Kirby fan. One of the reasons why Kirby's my main in Super Smash Bros. <laughs> Anyway, as I was saying, uh, PS5 and PS Now, yada yada yada. PS5 will have PlayStation Now. There we go. We're gonna be able to we're gonna be able to use uh, PS Now on PlayStation Five, but it'll miss out on a key Xbox and Stadia feature. Now, what could this be? I wonder. This one's on Tech Radar. With the PS5 launch date confirmed now, gamers the world over will be speculating as to what features the service and services the PlayStation ecosystem will maintain for the, from the current generation, and which ones will be dropped. For now, though, it looks like the PlayStation Now platform, which lets you stream a, a curated list of legacy PlayStation games directly to your console, will still be available on PS5. Japanese gaming magazine Famitsu recently featured an interview with software engineer Yasuhiro Osaki, who works at Sony Interactive Entertainment, 
According to DualShockers, Osaki confirmed that PS Now would continue on the next-gen PS5 console, though with some surprising limitations given, given wider trends in streaming for games, including a lack of support for PS Now for mobile. Ah. Okay. Ah well, not a major issue. I mean, everybody else is doing it. I don't blame them, yeah. Mobile is big business for games these days. With tent pole for free-to-play games like Fortnite, PUBG, and Call of Duty Mobile, the less said about the latter, the better, being pushed on iOS and Android devices, and the Apple Arcade subscription service pitching iOS and iPad OS as go-to platforms for quality indie titles. When it comes to game streaming, too, when it comes to game streaming too, Google Salia could prove a disruptive force when it launches in November this year. With a per title payment model, that already raises alarm bells. Uh -huh. Per title payment model. Uh -huh. That will let players access games through a huge array of devices and platforms, from mobiles and tablets to browsers and smart TVs. With Microsoft also pursuing mobile with Project X Cloud streaming service, Sony could well be left behind with a lack, by a lack of flexibility, something that may not come as a surprise to anyone who's been trying to use crossplay between Sony and other platforms. So in a way, Sony are still stingy over the cross-platform cross play. Mm -hmm. I mean, I predicted it a couple of years ago that cross-platform play would become a thing. Okay, I, put, I tried to predict it for 2017, but here we are, and crossplay is a thing for all major multi-platform titles like Fortnite, Call of Duty, Overwatch, Rocket League. I wouldn't be too surprised if in the next couple of years we have all multi-platform games that are released with cross-network play, mm -hmm. which would mean for which would mean from our Formula One fans out there, I do commentary for the Talk of the Devil League. We could end up having cross-platform play with PC and PS4. How 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 big would the league be at that point? Yeah, heck, how I've been able to join in that league. What league? The one I just mentioned, Talk of the Devil. Yeah. Mm. Well. Well, if that's if that one's on Game Pass. F1 2018, yes. F1 2019, not at the moment. Anyway. Although we recently saw a change of heart from Sony on that front. Yeah, with regards to cross-platform play. Both Sony and Microsoft allow gamers to access their respective game streaming service, game streaming slash subscription services on PC. Oh, okay. Xbox Game Pass? Yes. PlayStation Now on PC? Why am I only just finding out about this? Anyway. But as players come to expect easy access to their titles wherever they are, with whatever devices they have to hand, not supporting PS Now on mobile could be a death nail for the service in the upcoming console wars. Which at this point wouldn't surprise me. However, many price cuts Sony however many price cuts Sony brings to the platform. One of them being a reduction in the cost for PS Now. Next up, we've got news on Fortnite. Yes, I know. Yeah, Fortnite has been in the news everywhere. 
over the course of the last few days because of their end of chapter one event. Yeah. Oh, by the way, can you um, can you tell the viewers uh, the joke that I made and the um, <laughs> and that pop quiz on that night? Oh, don't get me started. We had to get our team name changed because of that. Because we touched a couple of nerves with Fortnite fans in there. <laughs> but yeah, I played chapter two earlier today and I am thoroughly impressed and I like the new map. Because basi mean... basically what happened was we had the launch trailer like a couple of days ago. And the same footage from that launch trailer was used to kick off whenever you started playing Chapter 2 for the first time. Mm -hmm. My first game and I got to the top 10. Seven eliminations in the process. Granted I had a submachine gun on me the whole time, but that's but, but my point stands. But then again, so if you're looking for a duo partner... Oh, we should definitely we should definitely do that at some point. We should definitely do that at some point. <laughs> so that would go under like what PVE player versus environment PVP. But if we're in a squad, if you and me were in a squad though. Anyway, duos, two teams of two. Oh right, gotcha. <laughs> No, two, two, two player teams at a battle royale. So that would be two 50 player squad. Uh, no, that would, no, 52 player squads. Yes. There we go. Thank you. Or squads, which I believe is teams of four, if I'm not mistaken. That would be 25 teams of four, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. So again, if you are looking for a doubles partner, I've got Fortnite installed on my PC. That's my story. Good to know. So anyway, news on Fortnite. I'm not going to talk about the skins. I was going to talk about that, but the, the article's taking forever to load. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Fortnite has proved once again that it's the one that it's one of the most boundary-pushing video games out there. Following a shocking gamble that saw the game pulled offline for nearly 48 hours, players were reminded, were reminded that Epic Games Battle Royale hit is in a league of its own when it comes to experimental live events, all in service of the game's weird and wonderful brand of world building. Well, not wrong on that one. Creative mode, I know. The game relaunched, you might say, on Tuesday morning after a meteor struck the island. Hundreds of millions of players have been exploring and competing on for the last two years. In the Meteor's Wake was a black hole that sucked up the map and left players staring at a blank screen for hours. The game's new map, which had been leaked in bits and pieces over the last few weeks, came out the other side after two torturously long days of silence. The completely reworked island and the launch of the game's next season, which is essentially season 12, Chapter 2 Season 1 officially officially marks Fortnite Chapter 2, which features a brand new world full of activities and hidden challenges, an updated visual style and interface, and plenty of small but effective changes to how the game can be played. After a brief period of controversy and decline, Fortnite is exciting again. Well, they're not wrong on that one. The whole affair was easily the most groundbreaking event Epic has ever pulled off yet, after the developer raised the stakes with a world-shaking robot monster battle in late July. Huh? Why am I only finding out about this one? But it can be easy to forget that before it dominated all of Twitter, Twitch and YouTube last weekend, Fortnite wasn't in the greatest place. In fact, it felt like the game had entered into its first downward spiral, following a summer during which it hosted a hugely successful esports event, the first ever Fortnite World Cup, and could seemingly do no wrong. Season 10, arriving the week after the World Cup, felt like a bad hangover after a, rap 
Raucous Celebration, if that's how you pronounce it, R-A-U-C-O-U-S, Raucous Celebration, instead of Epic using its 10th season to celebrate the game's meteoric two-year rise and the realisation of its esports ambitions, the game started to sour and everyone was taking notice. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Let's put it this way. Let's not be too surprised if we end up with a Fortnite movie at the end of all this. Let's not be too surprised if that happens. I wouldn't see it. I guarantee you a lot of kids will be dragging their parents to the big screen to be watching it. I know. Why? Because it's Fortnite. And the kids love playing Fortnite. Fortunately enough for Epic, kids love to spend their money on Fortnite. With permission from their parents, of course. They always Sometimes. have to... Hmm. Talking of which, talking of which, you know there are there are cases out there with where uh, where where people spending thousands of pounds on skins on Fortnite. Why not just buy the battle? Why not just buy the battle pass every season? It would save you so much hassle. Anyway, someone. Anyway, you thought that was bad. Look at the article I just found. Oh. Someone spent two hundred and twenty thousand dollars in microtransactions on a Transformers game. Now that's what I call Autobots Assemble. And not necessarily for the right reasons. I know. And it turns out this is from Kotaku, no less. I know. You thought $90,000 in microtransactions was bad? Then you should see what one person spent on a mobile Transformers game. A large part of the Game Connect Asia Pacific Conference, held days before PAX Australia is part, as part of Melbourne International Games Week, is developers sharing their wisdom with other developers. Some of what some of that wisdom comes in the form of monetization strategies, be, because most Aussie developers are small studios working on mobile platforms or free-to-play titles, and at the end of the day, everyone needs to pay rent. Not wrong about that one. So there's often quite a few talks about making money, what strategies work for what games, and what and at what parts that that should factor in the design process. Henry Fong, the CEO of mobile publisher and developer Yodel, Yodelin Lady, and Featherweight Games co-founder Dylan Bevis spoke about how free-to-play games needed to consider the monetization process from the design stage instead of factoring it in afterwards. But a key part of the process is understanding the audience of a game and what they are likely to pay. In the case of Rodeo Stampede, an endless runner which has gotten over 100 million downloads, Fong told the crowd the highest spending users or whales, as they were referred to in the talk, might spend a few hundred. But in the case of Transformers Earth Wars, another game by published by Yodel, one whale spent around 150,000 U- U- US dollars, or just over 222,000 Aussie dollars. Mm-hmm. Now, Beggars believe how one's done that. Beggars believe how one person can spend that much money on it. I don't know, mate. (laughs) Either they must be very, 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 very rich, or... Or not watching their kids that much. 
That might also be a possibility. When did Earth Wars get released? Ah, it was released three years ago. Transformers Earth Wars was released three years ago. So they'll have probably spent, on average, 70000 a year? Mm -hmm. Which is roughly 50000 US dollars. Which will probably be around between forty and forty-five thousand pounds a year here in the UK. So you're looking at about a hundred and thirty thousand pounds mm -hmm. in UK money. Now we've got some news on Pokemon Sword and Shield. I have my pre-order for Pokemon Sword, and Farfetch'd has an evolution. Surfetch'd, to be exact. If you've not seen the trailer, James, you definitely should at some point. Anyway. Pokemon Sword and Shield. Fab Pikachu, Long Meowth, and more Gigantam... Gig Gigantamax forms revealed. Okay. Let's have a look. The Pokemon Company has released a new trailer for Pokemon Sword and Shield. This video gives us our first look at a handful of new Gigantamax forms that some classic Gen 1 Pokemon like Pikachu, Meowth, and Charizard will be able to take cotton in the upcoming Switch games. The trailer begins with Pikachu, which resembles its original chubby incarnation when it Gigantamaxes. And I've, I've actually got a screenshot of it in front of me, and... Oh boy! That's going to make battles very interesting! Okay. It kind of reminds me of the fire chocobo summon from Final Fantasy Seven. The, <laughs> the, the what? The fire chocobo summon attack from Final Fantasy Seven. Well, the one that ba the one that goes bounce, bounce, bounce. <whistles> right, I'm gonna, right, I'm gonna, remember the chocobo mod material from Final Fantasy Seven. Oh, I'm thinking. I'm thinking of the death blow where it just charges into everything. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes, but then again, there was a level up called Fight Chocobo. Oh my word! Yep. If you perform something like twenty to thirty death blow summons, you can um uh, it unlocks the Fight Chocobo attack. Oh boy. Speaking of which, have you tried Final Fantasy Final Fantasy yet? Nope. But rest assured, folks, I will be playing Final Fantasy VII on Throwback Thursdays. <laughs> After Spider Man, of course. No. Yes. <laughs> I'm not doing Spider Man again. I am not doing the PS One Spider Man again. I am standing by that. The only Spider Man I'm go the only Spider Man game I'm going to be playing is the one on the PlayStation Four. Okay, That's the but... only one I'm going to be playing. <laughs> anyway. The other... St anyway. So, there we go, folks. You know what? Screw it. My first throwback Thursdays for 2020. Final Fantasy VII. There. I'm finally playing Final Fantasy VII, guys. Are you happy now? Yes. <laughs> but back to the podcast. The other starter from Pokemon... The Pokemon Let's Go Games, Eevee will also be able to go Gigantamax in Sword and Shield. When it transforms, the fur around its neck becomes extra fluffy! And its normal type attacks turn into G-Max Cuddle. I'm quite concerned about that one. Yes, I know. In addition to dealing damage, this move causes Pokémon of the opposite gender to become infuriated. Not infatuated, even which may prevent them from attacking. Okay! Um, that's quite disturbing now I come to think of it. Yes, I know. Other classic Pokemon that can take on new forms when they Gigantamax include Butterfree, Charizard, and Meowth. Butterfree's wings expand to Mothra-like proportions, while Charizard's wings are formed out of flames. Oh my word, that is so cool! Meowth, meanwhile, is hilariously elongated 
you can take a look at all the Gigantamax Pokemon in the trailer. I will be reacting to the tra I will be reacting to the trailer next week, folks. So yeah, that's actually quite interesting. Been a very interesting week in gaming. But nevertheless, we have got 39 trophies to get through, all leading up to... Ah. Right. Now, I can't go through the secret trophies for this game just yet. But I can go through the rest. So that's 18 secret trophies. Take that away from 39. We've only got 21 trophies to go through. But nevertheless, combine them with the 18 hidden trophies, which I won't be able to reveal this week. And you get... The Elusive Platinum Trophy! And that means only one thing, ladies and gentlemen! Points and trophies! Trophy achievement hunting! Points and trophies! Trophy achievement hunting! Yep, it's points and trophies time, and we have got the Medieval Remaster coming out. And that is going to be October 25th, which is a week tomorrow at time of recording. We're recording this on the Thursday, so that it's out for you guys on the Friday. Unless you support me on Patreon, patreon.com slash Retro, and you can get early access to the podcast. We've only got 21 trophies to go through, so we can't go through the secret trophies just yet. We won't be able to do that until next week. Mm -hmm. But rest assured, I'll go through the secret trophies next week. So, here are the trophies that we know so far. The following trophies are valued at bronze. Arsonist, set 50, fires, uh, set 50 enemies on fire. A shocking lack of respect. Destroy 100 gravestones. Not so armless. Defeat stained glass demon with just your arm. Mostly armless. Kill something with your own arm. <laughs> this sounds like a lot of fun. Now we've added magic. Enchant the broadsword. Partial to the potions. Drink 32 health vials. Death sm Deathly smorgas board. Die seven different ways. Give me that back! Lose, then recover your weapon from an imp. Zip zap imp splat. Fry a dozen imps with lightning. The answer is chicken! Throw 42 chicken legs. Dizzy decimator. Defeat 30 enemies with the sword spin attack. Master Dan at arms. Collect every weapon. Impaired drivers. Defeat both mecha imps and their taunting imp pilots. So, money bags! Collect 10,000 gold coins. The following trophies are rated at silver. Healthiest man, man alive, uh, dead. Collect every life bottle. If it slithers, I slays. Kill the serpent of Galomir. Almost a hero. Give the knights of Galomir everything you have. And the following trophies are ranked at gold. King of Cups, collect all the chalice rewards. Morton would be proud, collect all entries of the Book of Galamir. Co quest completest, complete all levels in the game. You get all those alongside the 18 hidden trophies and you get... The Elusive Platinum Trophy! The Elusive Platinum Trophy. And that is it for this week, folks. Uh, we've got The Apprentice to look forward to tomorrow. Uh, we recorded that before this podcast. Uh, but nevertheless, hope you enjoyed what you saw today. If you did, as always, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to be a baptized into following this channel, hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. Click the bell to join the latter-day scenes notification squad so you don't miss anything I do on this channel. You can check out this guy's DJR blog and Facebook page. Links will be in the description below. I'll also put a link to his YouTube channel um, when I can. Um... I've got my review of the Joker film on the left, season two podcast playlist on the right. We've got The Apprentice to look forward to tomorrow. And then I'll be recovering from uh, my friend's wedding on the Sunday, and then I'll be back to business on Monday. Until then, enjoy the rest of your day. Peace out, and as always, stay faithful.